Massachusetts Congressman Bill Keating is our guest. Let's go on the record. He's been a steady voice on the crisis in Ukraine, attending the Munich Security Conference and speaking out for refugees. Does he see a path to peace? The Congressman is here. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR. I'm Janet Wu, along with News Center 5 political reporter Sharman Sicchetti. The crisis in Ukraine continues to dominate the news cycle, and we're pleased to have Congressman Bill Keating with us this morning. He represents the state's 9th district, first taking office in 2011. He joins us via Zoom from Cape Cod. Congressman, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Sharman. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be here. Good morning. In recent days, Vladimir Putin has increased attacks on civilians, babies, hospitals. Is it time to provide Ukraine the fighter jets it is pleading for? It, it, the fighter jets with the 29-year-old uh, MiGs, that's one issue. There's discussions on that. Uh, it's very delicate and it, it's difficult because we're dealing with our NATO allies on that. Plus, you have to look at just the incremental advantage that might have. On the no-fly zone, clearly we shouldn't be doing that. In order to protect our pilots, uh, our planes, we would have to go into Russia uh, and take out their sophisticated air defense system. It would escalate into World War III and there'd even be more deaths. So uh, there's limits to what we can do, but we're doing so much more. And just this week, we put together another $13.6 billion in aid to Ukraine. So uh, we continue to step up to the plate because what we're witnessing, what what the world is witnessing, except for the the Russians themselves, uh, is horrific. Uh, they're war crimes. Uh, it's outrageous and heartbreaking at the same time. And we're seeing the president take action as well regarding Russia's most favored nation status. Is, is it enough? Does it all go far enough? Well, there's difference in timelines, and that's what people should understand. The sanctions and, and actions like this uh, are actions that look really compound over time and, and be significant. What we're seeing on the ground is happening lifetime. But these sanctions are real. Putin's holding a losing hand. And what the president has announced just in terms of an additional uh, sanction to Russia is there's 180 countries in the world that have this kind of most favored status. We're pulling them out of that great number of people. And the G7 is working as a group, the most uh, sophisticated countries, our allies uh, in Asia and through Europe, uh, we represent one half of the world's GDP. It's another big blow to Russia. Um, sanctions on, is, is on one hand is one thing, um, but on our end, gas prices are jumping right now, day by day, hour by hour. First, should we be braced for $5 or even $6 a gallon? And if the U.S. is only importing 8% of its oil from Russia, how much of this hike is genuine supply shortages? And how much do you suspect is price gouging? Well, when I was in the Munich Security Conference just three weeks ago, our allies were quite blunt to us. They wanted to make sure we were stepping up to the plate the way they were. This, this subject came up rather strongly, as a matter of fact, and we're showing our continued leadership by following this. It's a bipartisan effort to, to move in this direction. Gas prices will continue to escalate, but we're doing everything we can to try and mitigate that uh, and uh, even reaching out to uh, Venezuela. Uh, just to show the differences uh, of how quickly things are changing in, in the world right now to uh, increase their supply. Uh, the president's been dealing directly with uh, our Middle East uh, oil suppliers to help with the oil supply there. But this will have a, a worldwide effect. And when I was in Europe just a, a short time ago, they were already experiencing enormous increases in gas themselves. But what about $5 and $6 a gallon? Should we be ready for something like that? Well, we shouldn't throw it off the table. I hope our, uh, our ability to mitigate that will help, uh, but they're paying significantly more than that right now. Uh, but in the long run, not acting uh, will cost us much, much more in many respects, including so, uh, our security. So Congressman, what is the best way in your estimation to stabilize prices? Go to Saudi Arabia, convince the oil companies to hike production, which also means a lot of unhappy stockholders. Well, I think that we're gonna have to do our best. We have been. You know, behind the scenes for months now, in preparation to this potential move by Putin, the U.S. has been going around the world securing supplies to help Europe because they were facing a situation where they could be shut off or, or deal with just such a minimal amount that they couldn't uh, truly go forward economically. 
Uh, that's a weapon Putin has used in the past. Uh, he's going to play that card now, uh, but we're playing our cards. Uh, and it might be a, a short period where we're going to have to see escalations, but in the long run, we're going to be stronger, not under his thumb, uh, in terms of how he can affect the cause of the price of gasoline and oil. As you know, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, who you have little in common with politically for the most part, uh, isn't pulling back on his call for Putin's assassination. What's your reaction when you heard that? Well, I think we have to be very cautious and realize that uh, things we say, whether you're a member of the House, a member of the Senate, any kind of cabinet official, any governmental official, uh, or our allies, anything we can say can be used uh, by Putin as a tool as additional propaganda justifying a war that is should there's no reason to justify it it's unprovoked uh, it, it's truly uh, historically the worst action of a country in in europe since the 1940s so we should be very careful to what we say so it can't be used uh, number one with the putin that could escalate his actions and number two as propaganda that's useful to them so he should take it back he should take it back and so one big question mark in this whole situation is China's role in all of this. What kind of pressure should President Biden put on China? We're in discussions. Uh, it's amazing the kind of discussions we're having behind the scenes with, with countries that we never thought we were having discussions with because they're concerned too. Believe me, China is not happy with Russia's actions. But they do have uh, a tight relationship. They, world the order two, place. Excuse me, the two, the two countries do have a very tight relationship though. So. Couldn't there be more done in, in, in this role? There is. I mean, I think we're already dealing with China uh, behind the scenes to try and see what influence they can, can bring to bear themselves. They don't like this. This is disadvantageous to them, too. So Russia's got an economy about the size of Italy. It's not a strong economy. It's not uh, diverse. Uh, and it's not big. It's, frankly, a weak economy. Uh, and their actions here destabilizing with China, uh, the people they do deal with uh, is affecting them in a harmful way, too. So uh, they might give some lip service to Putin. Uh, it, you know, she might do that. However, uh, in reality, they're not happy with what he's doing.